Hi, I'm Rick at Rick Turns, and today's video is... It's dry. It's dry! <laughs> Maybe I had the temperature a little bit too high there. Oh yeah, and here it is. Okay, this is this uh, popper bowl that I roughed out, I don't know, at least three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I'm not quite sure what. I have got my two dryness measurement devices here. One is uh, postal scale, which uh, I can also use for mailing stuff. The other is my moisture meter. I use both of them to determine if it's dry, but mainly I use the postal scale because I'm not really sure how accurate the uh, moisture gauge is. So uh, I'm going to put this on here. I've got 1860 grams. I do find it easier to measure this in grams. Today is the 15th. And now, I'm going to use the moisture meter. I've been measuring it in one spot the whole time just to try and be consistent. I've got 11.6%. This is my uh, calibration block, you might say, that I keep in my workshop all the time. So I use this to say this is what the uh, ambient moisture content is. I'm going to measure it across the grain. I've got 11.6%. <laughs> I'm right on. I win. I win. Well, anyway. Okay. Now, it's 11.6%. Okay, cool. I started uh, drying this on the 22nd of September. What is that? That's at least three weeks ago, maybe four. Uh, these are all the weights I got. It started at 2,350 grams, 23.1% moisture content. And I've just finished at 1,860 grams, 11.6 moisture content. So 2,350 grams minus 1,860 grams, that is, uh, that is a lot of grams. May, maybe enough to make a graham cracker. <laughs> Little metric joke there. Okay. All right. I've got it mounted in my chuck here. That's a... Record Power SC4 Chuck with 120 millimeter jaws on it. And that was the size tenon that I turned, so worked out pretty well. You'd think I had some forethought. And now I'm gonna bring this back into round and turn the speed down, turn it on. I'm about 850 RPM. Gonna be using my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. A lot of toolbox, a little bit of tear out, but I'm always backing around. Now, I'm gonna to switch to this tool. This is a ring tool, and I'm gonna get rid of those uh, tear outs. And toolbox. Ooh, got a bunch of very fine shavings. Man, I still got tool marks in there. A little better. Still got tool marks on there. All right, 
that, uh, that looks pretty good. It's good enough for sanding. It's going to have to be sanded anyway. All right, now for the inside. Pretty thick here. As you notice right here, it's about, uh, about an inch thick. Yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is cut the bottom down, I think. With, of course, my 5 8 inch bow gouge. What else? Still 850 RPM. Got a little bit out around here. Uh, I've done a little more work on this, uh, cleaning out the bottom there. I think I've got the uh, thickness down to where I want it on the sides and the bottom here. And uh, don't really need to do much more cleaning up on it. But there is one last thing to do, and that is this uh, ledge, edge, right here, which is, you can see, I've left pretty thick. My original reason for leaving this thick is I was going to do a peg-decorated pattern on it. But I have decided to do a wood burnt and color dyed pattern on it. Um, like I say, I'm just going to round this whole piece over here. tear it right there I want to get rid of. I need to sand all this. I got quite a bit of sanding to do. It's a pretty good surface, but it still needs to be sanded. You can still see some tool marks in there. So all the sanding is done. Sand it up to 400 grit and I stopped there this time. So now what I'm going to do with this bowl, I want to do some, uh, uh, some dye. I've got a graphic right here, uh, a bunch of leaves on vines which I kind of like. I got this off Ken Stock Photo uh, for $2.50. You'll find a link to it in the uh, show notes. And I am going to kind of wrap it around the curved rim there. Now comes the hard part. Yes, masking tape and figuring out how the heck this is going to fit around there. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be easy. And now, just gonna kinda start tracing this around. And, uh, oops, well, that didn't work all that well. Yeah, tracing on this circular rim is not going to be easy. Well, <laughs> tracing it onto the round rim, that did not work. When I pulled it off to take a look at it, it just wasn't working at all. So plan B is I'm going to do the wood burning uh, pretty much by hand without tracing the pattern, just looking at it here and kind of drawing it onto the wood.
Okay, see how this is going to work. I hope it is. Coldwood Cub Word Burner here. Put it up on about a eight, I think. And it heats up pretty quick. And uh, there we go. Okay. This is going to take a while. I'll be back later. Well, that didn't take long, did it? It's like no time at all. Okay. I had done all the wood burning here. All the little leaves and uh, a few other things on there. Small leaves, large leaves, all kinds of stuff there. So, uh, next thing I'm going to do with this is put on some uh, coloring on the leaves. Some of the leaves are going to be green. Some of them are going to be red, some of them are going to be brown. So it's kind of like early fall, I think. So, uh, let me see. I'm going to start with green. Yeah. This adeline dye is not recommended for skin contact. So I'm wearing my uh, protective gloves here. Okay. Let's just see how this is going to do. So let me put a few more of these. I'm just going to kind of scatter around all the different colors. Well, that didn't take any time at all. <laughs> it's amazing how much I can get done when the cameras are turned off. Okay. This actually took me two, two and a half hours to uh, put the colors on all the leaves on the bowl here. So, now, if I were to put on, brush on, or wipe on a finish right now, uh, I'm pretty sure all those colors would, would run. That's what happened the last time I did it. So, what I'm going to do is spray on a uh, sanding sealer, and after that, I'll put a couple of coats on that, and then after that, I'll put on the finish. So what I'm using here is uh, Zinzer Bullseye Shellac Traditional Finish and Sealer. I'm going to turn the lathe on slow. That's about as slow as it'll go. And just spray this on. Looks like I've got a good coat on there. I am going to leave the lathe running for a little while uh, so that if there are any oversprays, it won't sag. It'll just kind of get distributed by centrifugal motion. I've got several coats of sanding sealer sprayed on here. I'm going to be finishing off with uh, uh, a wipe on varnish, but right now, I just want to get this uh, tenon off the bottom here, and that's what I'm going to be doing at the moment. That's yeah, just about 600 RPM. I don't want to go any faster than that with it on my really big faceplate. And now I'm going to be using, for a change, a half inch bowl gouge. to remove the nub, sand the bottom, and put on some finish. 
and it's done. This is my fall foliage bowl. Not really because of the fall uh, theme of the leaves on it, but because I've dropped it so many times. <laughs> That's a little fall joke. Okay, yes, it's all done. Bottom's finished. Got uh, uh, several coats of varnish on it. And it's turned out pretty well. Uh, much better than I would have expected for, um, for uh, what kind of wood is this? Yeah, it's uh, poplar, poplar. Heh, <laughs> senior moment. Yes, uh, so from now on, I will look forward to getting popular uh, when I go out to find my logs. <laughs> uh, all right, that's all I got. See you next video.